So let's hop into um, our thought for the day. It comes from one of my favorite verses. Um, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, this just shows how powerful this is. You know, and if now a lot of you may be too young um, to remember or be familiar with the song by the birds called Turn, Turn, Turn. And a lot of you are uh, very familiar with it, but you know, remember to everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, a time to be born. You know, that song, right? I can't sing, but you know how it goes. Um, and that it, very, very powerful song that the birds did. And fascinating because People really connect with the song and the message of that song, that there's a season for everything and an activity for every activity under heaven. And it talks about a lot of different, you know, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to embrace, a time to shun from embracing, a time to plant, a time to uproot what's been planted. And it's basically when you read it, it's about the seasons that we go through in various areas of life. And amazing, when you look at it through this lens, the whole thing kind of is about beginnings and endings. Beginnings and endings. And the thing that I was starting to say was so interesting, you know, one of the things that I do on the, the kind of the, the thought for the day as we talk about stuff, is I always talk about something from science and psychology and performance, but also how the scriptures talk about that same thing. And I always say, you know, one of my favorite verses says A, B, or C. Well, that song that became so popular um, back in the hippie days and beyond uh, was right out of the scriptures. It's out of Ecclesiastes chapter three. Now, roll the clock forward. Um, most of my work is uh, a lot of it, most of it um, in the consulting world is with CEOs and companies and businesses and people that are running things and cultures and all of that. And it was interesting, um, but however many years ago, a handful of years, five, six years ago, maybe seven. I was dealing with a lot of really high performers, really high performers who do incredible things. And you think of them as strong leaders, right? And I kept having the same conversation over and over and over again with all these high performers that could not pull the trigger on ending something. They just, you know, there's a, they had, there's a relationship they needed to end or, you know, to, to sometimes fire somebody for various reasons, non-performance or they're creating problems, you know, in the team or whatever, or to shut down a business unit that wasn't working or to shut down aspects of the business that were pulling resources and, and focus away from, from where it should have been. In other words, or, or, shutting down stuff whose day had gone by. It's like cleaning out your closet. There's crap in there you hadn't worn for however long. Well, it's time to end its ability to take up space in your closet, right? Well, that's what that passage in scripture is about. It's about beginnings and endings. And it was interesting when I was working with, and still, you know, always working with these high performer types, that you wouldn't expect for them to have a problem, would you? Like they're strong and they can, you know, say, you know, we got to stop this, shut this down. We're going to end this and, you know, take a stand. But you know what? So many of them, there was some, some soft spot inside, wounded spot, fear, a lot of dynamics that kept them from ending things. And we hear it on this program all the time. Talking to a woman just yesterday or the day before, kept going back to breaking up with a boyfriend. That relationship should have ended, but she would end it and then couldn't end it. We'll go back, try it again, try to fix it, go back, try. Ending things is a part of life. 
Now, some things are meant to be forever, like marriage, for example. There are <clears throat> some circumstances where even that ends and has to end. But a lot of things are really not necessarily designed to live forever. There's a season to their thriving. Tony and I were going out to dinner one time a number of years ago, and I was kind of depressed. I was thinking about, I just didn't want to go. I felt kind of, I don't want to do this. And then I thought about it. The reason I didn't want to do it was we were going out with this particular couple and i just really didn't i just and i said to her i said why are we doing this she goes because you wanted to and i said well i don't want to i thought you wanted to she said no i thought you wanted to do you want to no i don't want to either well why are we doing this and we started thinking about it and it was a couple nice couple um that we had known for a number of years and every now and then you know we get together and we started thinking about it, and there was a season back when, for various, you know, reasons and things that we were involved with, and um, you know, a lot of stuff with kids and and stuff that that it made sense. This kind of you know group would hang out sometimes and do stuff. But after that season, you know, their lives went in a totally different direction. Their values changed, were way different. They were, they were just, you know, pursuing life in a way that wasn't the direction we were going in. And, and it might have made sense for a season, but it didn't make sense anymore. And I was thinking, you know, if we weren't going out with them tonight, you know, you're talking about there were, you know, two or three other couples that were always saying, we wish we had more time with you guys. We want to go deeper. Right. And, and we could be spending this night, you know, this, this dinner, this time with them, but we're not. And so we started to think, you know what, we need to, we need to really focus on maybe some of, some of the, activities and, and you start to look at all these categories that you're involved in maybe this committee or are you you know belong to this this group or whatever it is and it might have been right for a season but you really need that time and energy to go pursue whatever is next and whatever god has put before you that has life now and maybe it's time maybe it's time i quit that softball league because i need that night to go pursue my next step in my career i need to go take a course or i need to do this or that and that's the idea of ecclesiastes 3 that there are sometimes and when you think about this um i won't read the whole thing but i'll give you some examples there's a there's a time to plant and a time to uproot what's been planted I remember this in, in my own life. I, you know, wanted to do a, a faith-based psychiatric hospital and stepped out and started um, that, that venture with some, some other people. And we did a hospital and it worked well. We did another one and, and another one and treatment centers ended up with the, you know, sizable company throughout the Western United States that had treatment centers and hospital units. And I thought that was going to be what I did really predominantly for the rest of my life. You know, I was young when I started it. I was in my late 20s. And I thought, you know, this is, gosh, this was a dream. And it took a long time to build it and ran it for about 12 years or so. And then what happened was the, the healthcare industry started to change. And basically insurance towards the end, insurance kind of, kind of went away for um for inpatient psych you know you could when we started we could spend 30 days with a patient and their family and really really do a lot of good things and then it, they kept going down to like three to five day stays that's not why i went into it i didn't go into it just to medicate somebody and send them back out on the streets without going through deep deep 
healing and change and growth and all of that. And even though it was, you know, as viable as a business, it still worked fine. It wasn't why I went into it. And so the season for that calling ended. And that's when, you know, we sold it and got out of it and started to take the message to other venues. But see, that just happens in life. And sometimes we hang on too long to things whose season has passed. Sometimes you hang on to trying to resolve a conflict with somebody who's in denial and they're not coming to the party. And the Bible is full of examples like Matthew 18. Go talk to them. If they listen, you warn them over. But if they don't, then what does it say? Don't, you know, keep trying, keep nagging and all that. Get two or three other people and go talk to them. If they don't hear that, do an intervention. If they don't hear that, you know, ultimately you're going to have to say, well, you know, if you don't want to, you don't want to want to deal with a problem, then we can't hang around you. See, that's a, like the passage says, it, 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 there's a time to embrace and a time to shun from embracing. So the psychology of this is, or a big part of the psychology of, of this is, that's not easy to do. Sometimes it's very difficult for people to, to end something, to admit failure, admit defeat. You know, Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time to search and a time to give up is lost. How many times you have, you know, like in business or some product line or this and that, and we're working and trying to make it work and working. And then finally, you know what? It's just not going to work. We got to shut it down because whatever reason. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about this and what I called it in the books, Necessary Endings was the name of the book, Necessary Endings. As Ecclesiastes 3 says, it's sometimes the season is over. Sometimes things aren't working. Sometimes you've tried everything you can do. It's not in your power to make it different. Somebody else won't do their part. That's when sometimes an ending is in order but to do that we got to face our fears and let me give you a handful of them to look at one is sometimes we're afraid we over identify with the pain that it's going to cause somebody and we just keep enabling it because we don't want to say no because that's going to be a tough thing for them to deal with even though that may be the best thing for them because it will wake them up and realize, you know, I got to have a come to Jesus moment here. I got to face the light. Realize this is costing me. But if you keep enabling it, that never happens. Sometimes it's fear of the loss. You know, you end, you end some things, you lose some things. And there's a grief period. It happens in singles life all the time you're dating somebody you realize this is just not ultimately what i'm looking for you have to end it but there's so much good there and so much attachment it's hard to go through that loss sometimes it's a fear of the conflict sometimes it's a fear of i might need that how many hoarders you know you want to throw something away and for instance, no i might need that we well, hadn't used it in 20 years i know but i might need it well if you ever do, then go find another one, but you haven't used it in a long time. And so I want you to think about, here's the sentence I want you to take away from this. What is in my life right now that doesn't fit my tomorrow? What is in my life right now that does not fit my tomorrow? There may be some involvements of time. There may be some involvements of money. There may be some involvements of relationship and energy and focus. But if we're deeply involved in stuff and that's not part of my vision for tomorrow, then we better have a plan of it is necessary to end it at some point. So what in my life exists now that doesn't fit my tomorrow? If you're single, for example, and you want to have a great relationship 
with somebody that's able to love you and respect you and, you know, communicate and have mutual affection and all of that. And you're in a relationship where you're getting gaslighted and treated in toxic fashions. Well, that really doesn't fit your vision for tomorrow, does it? And so that's got to be addressed. Or if you want to be financially thriving, and there may be some practices going on today that doesn't fit the vision of a financially thriving person. For example, it might be time to really, really, really start to take care of some debt. That's a big one. Or stop some other, in some other patterns or involvements or things that you're spending money on. It could be in any area of life. But the concept is something the Bible calls pruning. And we prune in three instances. There are good things in our life that we're involved in, but they're not the best things for that use of time. So we have to let go sometimes of some good things. Oh, I'd love to, you know, I would love to, I just had this happen there. That there was a group forming that I would have really liked to have been in. It was a, uh, a men's group. And I would really, really have enjoyed it, but I looked at, I looked at my bandwidth over the next year, and I looked at, wow, the time I really, 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 it would be so much more useful to for me to use that time focused on a couple of things I know I've got to get done over the next year. So sometimes we have to let go of some good things and prune them from the menu sometimes they're not good things sometimes there's things that they're just they're sick and they're not going to get well you're dealing with an addict who's in denial and you keep trying and keep trying and they're just not coming to the party and you say that's all i can do you know i, I can't be around you till you get sober right and sometimes there's just stuff that's taking up space and we just have to you know kind of end it all right, so there is, uh, go think about this. Time and energy investment. What are you invested in that it may be time to wind down as this year winds down? So, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do that next year. I'm not going to take that class next year. I'm not going to do this or that or be involved here or I'm going to cancel that subscription. You know, it's costing me too much to have, um, 64 movie channels that I never watch <laughs> or stuff. You know, if you did that, you could subscribe to Boundaries.me. How about that? All righty. There's our word for the day. Ecclesiastes 3. To everything, there is a time and a season to every activity under heaven.